Okay, class. So, the first setup that we looked at today okay, was very instructive. We came up with a few conclusions from that setup. So, what do you see here? Initially, I did not connect a battery to the circuit, right? And when there was no battery connected, what did you observe? The light bulb did not light up. Okay? At the same time, did the ammeter show any sort of deflection? No. Okay? And we concluded that because of these two effects, there is no current flowing in the circuit. Right? After that, what I did was, I connected a battery to the circuit. Okay? And what was observed when the battery was connected? The light bulb lighted up. Okay? At the same time, the ammeter showed a deflection. Right? And if the ammeter shows a deflection and the light bulb lights up, what does that imply? There is current flowing in the circuit. Okay? So through that experiment, we've managed to establish one thing that's very important. Okay? Whenever there is current which is not flowing in the circuit, there is no EMF. Okay? Because there is no battery, battery is a source of EMF, which you've all learned before. And if there's no current flowing in the circuit, there is no EMF. Okay? In the second case, we saw that there was current flowing in the circuit, and we can link this to another similar observation, which is that there is EMF, right? If there is current flowing in the circuit, there must be EMF in the circuit. Okay? So, I want you all to bear these observations in mind and now I would like you all to move to the front. I'm going to show you a demonstration. You look very solemn today. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So what I have here is an ammeter. Okay, you guys are familiar with the ammeter. You just saw what the ammeter did in the other setup. Okay, showed a deflection when there was current flowing. Okay, and this is what we call a solenoid. Okay, a solenoid is simply a coil of wire. Okay, usually you're used to seeing straight wires like this. Okay, but a solenoid is simply a wire that's coiled up. Okay, it's nothing special. Okay, it's just a coiled up piece of wire so that it doesn't take up so much space. And I have a third thing here, which is a bar magnet. Okay? You've been introduced to a bar magnet in your magnetism lesson. Okay? And um, you would have played around with it a little bit. Okay? So what I'm going to do right now is, if you notice, there is a hole in the coil, okay, in the solenoid. I'm going to insert this bar magnet into the coil. And I want you all to pay attention to what is happening in the ammeter. Okay? Make sure every one of you can see. So what do you observe? There is a slight movement in the ammeter's needle, right? But the ammeter is really small, okay? And it's difficult for all of you to take a look at what's going on in the ammeter. So I have here with me something that's going to make our lives a little bit easier. Okay? It's called the galvanometer. And the particular one that I have is a giant galvanometer. This is the biggest one you guys. Let me look up the galvanometer first and I'll tell you a little bit more about it. Okay. So the galvanometer here is a replacement to the ammeter. Okay? Because the ammeter is not easy for you all to see. And I wanted something that's easier for you all to observe. Okay? But the difference between the galvanometer and the ammeter, there is a difference. Uh, Chisin, can you tell me what's the difference between the uh, thermometer and ammeter? Okay, Chisin, you're really smart. <laughs> <laughs> you answered the question right on the top. So, if you notice, the ammeter has zero right at the left side of it, okay, and it only deflects to the right. Whenever there's a current flowing, the ammeter needle deflects to the right, okay. But the galvanometer is different in the sense that it has a needle that's in the middle okay, and there are numbers either side of zero okay. so the galvanometer gives you one more piece of information than the ammeter 
which is the direction of current flow, like Jason has mentioned. Okay? So it's nothing very different from the ammeter. A deflection in the galvanometer still indicates that there is current flow, but it also gives us one more piece of information, which is the direction of current flow. Okay? So I'm going to repeat the same experiment that I conducted earlier on, which is to insert the bar magnet into the solenoid. And I want you all to pay close attention to what happens to the needle. Okay? And I'll ask you a few questions after this, which you need to answer. So I'm inserting the bar magnet, and I'm removing it. I insert it, I remove it. Okay? I'm going to do one further thing, okay? which is, I'm going to insert the bar magnet and keep it stationary inside the coil. That means I'm not going to move it inside the coil. Okay. All right. So now, this was a demonstration without me asking you any questions. But now, as I'm demonstrating, I want you guys to answer the questions that I'm asking you. So when I insert the bar magnet, what do you notice? Deflection. There is a deflection, right? What about when I remove the bar magnet? To the other side. There is a deflection as well, right? Okay. And thirdly, when I insert the bar magnet and keep it stationary, what do you see? No deflection whatsoever, right? Okay. So we have three key observations here, which I would like to summarize on the board for all of us. Okay. So first thing. So what did you observe when the bar magnet was inserted or removed from the coil? There was a deflection, right? Okay, there was a deflection, okay? And what does the deflection imply? Current must be flowing, okay? Just like in this case, when your ammeter showed a deflection, we concluded that there is current flow. In the same way, when a galvanometer shows a deflection, it means that current must be flowing. Okay. If there is current flowing, what does it imply? It must be EMF, right? Because the explicit link that we've drawn in the previous experiment is if there is no current flowing, there is no EMF. But if there is current flowing, there is EMF. Okay? So if we see that there is current flowing in this circuit, there must be EMF somewhere. Okay? So this is the first set of observations. The second thing that I did was to keep the bar magnet stationary. Okay, what was the observation when the bar magnet was inserted then kept stationary? There was no deflection. If there's no deflection, what does it imply? No current, no current flowing. Okay? And I'm not even going to ask, what does the conclusion come out as? What's the conclusion for this? So what can you conclude from the fact that there is no current flowing in the circuit? No EMF. no EMF, okay? This is the opposite situation to here, right? When there is current flowing, there is EMF. When there is no current flowing, there is no EMF. So clearly something funny is going on. Thank you, There is no EMF, okay? So there is something funny going on here, isn't it? Is there any battery connected to this circuit at all? Right? In the previous case, I had a battery that was connected to the circuit, isn't it? In this case, there is no battery. Okay? But I did something and there was suddenly current flowing. What was it that I did which caused the current to flow? I moved the magnet. Okay? You can see here, when the bar magnet is inserted or removed, okay? or in other words, if it's moved inside the coil, there was current flowing in the circuit. Okay? And when the bar magnet was stationary, there was no current flowing in the circuit. Okay. So even though I don't have a real battery connected to this circuit, what do you think 
was the battery in this case, the so-called battery. Teacher is the battery. Okay. Teacher did something and that was the source of EMF. What was it that I did? The movement of the magnet. Okay. So the movement of the magnet somehow produced some, induced some current flow in this circuit. Okay. Now I want to test out this observation further using two objects, okay, just to see if the bar magnet is anything special or maybe I can achieve the same effect by moving a scissors inside it as well, it's a metal, right? Bar magnets are also metal, so maybe this thing can achieve the same thing. So let's see what happens. <coughs> okay, no. <laughs> this, is, this is magnetized, I think. Um, okay, I'm going to try a different metal. Okay, this this uh, scissors is is a. Uh, it's not I put it together very well. Okay, I'm gonna try using this paper clip. Okay, paper clip is metallic, right? So what do you notice? No, no deflection, right? There's no deflection. And I'm gonna try using a marker as well. Marker, pen is mightier than a sword. Okay, you notice anything? There is no deflection, right? So somehow. The bar magnet is special, right? It's special because the insertion or removal of the bar magnet from the solenoid produces current flow, okay? So what is special about a bar magnet? What differentiates a bar magnet from a scissors or from, from a marker? Magnetism. Magnetism, right? So you guys learned that bar magnets possess this property which is different from all the other materials, which is magnetism, all right? And in our next lesson, what we're going to do is we're going to try and link this special property of the bar magnet, which is magnetism, to the current flowing in this circuit and the EMF that is present in this circuit. Okay? So when you go back home, I want you all to think a little bit about what you've covered so far. Okay? In the previous chapter, all right, you guys covered that when there is current flowing in a wire, there is... A magnetic field around the wire, right? In this case, the opposite seems to be happening. Okay, the opposite thing seems to be happening, which is when I have a moving magnet in this coil, current seems to start flowing. Okay, so there is a link between electricity and magnetism. This is something I want you all to ponder about. Okay, and in our next lesson, we will cover this link and establish it more fully. Okay, all right. Thank you, class.